Chairman, for holding this hearing, and thank you to the ranking member as well, and for allowing me to participate, even though I am not on this subcommittee. It is a very important issue. In the district I represent in Oregon, innovation is key to uh, the economy, much of which depends on STEM and high-tech fields. Uh, and even though I missed the testimony, I was in the Education Committee, I, I assure you I read the testimony and the word innovation is mentioned multiple times, not only in your testimony, but also in the proposed legislation. And business leaders often describe innovation and creativity as a key to economic growth, global competitiveness. And like my colleagues, I hear from technology companies about the need for more STEM graduates and from constituents and educators uh, who know that keeping students interested in STEM requires interdisciplinary education. But how do we assure that we have innovators? Uh, as this committee considers legislation to reauthorize America Competes Act uh, and in any STEM education discussions, I urge my colleagues uh, to consider the potential that integrating the arts and design broadly defined uh, into STEM education and the role that that can play in developing innovative minds. Research shows that educating and engaging both halves of the brain can help to foster uh, innovation and do more to keep students engaged. And this potential is why our colleague, Representative Aaron Schock, and I have started a bipartisan STEM to STEAM caucus where we promote the integration of arts and design into STEM learning to engage students, to develop their creativity and critical thinking skills, and to encourage them to pursue and stay in uh, STEM careers. Now, there was a recent uh, uh, issue of Economic Development Quarterly, and they talked about a study. Uh, here is just a uh, part of the abstract. <coughs> Governments, schools, and other nonprofit organizations are engaged in critical budget discussions that may affect our economic development success. The assumption is that arts and crafts are dispensable extras. Research suggests, however, that disposing of arts and crafts may have negative consequences for the country's ability to produce innovative scientists and engineers who invent patentable products and found new companies. And that is one of the reasons why the U.S. Patent Office was at our kickoff of the caucus, uh, very interested in this issue of assuring we have an innovative workforce. So I want to ask um, Dr. Bucky, yes, I hope I said your name right. In your testimony, you talk about Federal research and how it enables the education and training of the next generation of innovators. And you say that our STEM students and all students need a broad-based education to make a difference in the world. So can you talk about that difference that a well-rounded, broad-based education makes in fostering innovation? Uh, th thank you for this question. I couldn't have asked a better one. Um, so so Purdue, uh, when you add up our engineering graduates and our technology graduates, graduate the most of those in the country now. Um, our President has very clearly made a statement that we believe in a broad-based education. We believe that, that if you are going to succeed in this world today, it cannot only be the STEM disciplines. And we have two A's, by the way, arts and agriculture. Um, clearly support this concept. Interdisciplinary activities, which you referred to, are also central. Um, People need to understand that the problems and the issues that are facing this country and facing this world aren't going to come from one discipline very much longer. Um, and so we need to, to generate graduates who understand the breadth of problems that we are all going to see. Very supportive of all your comments. Thank you. And Dr. Killeen, you mentioned workforce development in American Competes and indicate you would support research into understanding how students learn STEM and how to best teach students in STEM fields. So is there room for improvement in the curriculum? And I would also like Mr. Brown to respond to that as well. Uh, yes, I think there is uh, always room to improve the curriculum and, and to improve the cognitive gain that students get. And I love your A uh, perspective on, on STEM. It is an all-hands-on-deck kind of world we are living in. Uh, we need to engage um, all, all primary stakeholders in solutions that are meaningful for society. Um, I think the biggest thing I would say, though, the, um, about STEM education is I think we know now the role of experiential learning, that that really trans can transform engagement. It leads to persistence when a students enter undergraduate settings. Um, seen that firsthand. There is research that demonstrates that. So it is not just in the classroom hearing the, 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 the pedagogy or online with uh, online, but, but hands on opportunities that allow for experiential learning. I think that is a definitely part of the secret sauce. Thank you. Mr. Brown? 
I, this is this is a, a fascinating topic about how to integrate the arts into STEM education or STEAM education. And, and thank you for starting your caucus and trying to integrate those efforts with the larger STEM education conversation. I think when we we have a lot of issues with regard to how the the, the term STEM is defined, and one of the things that we emphasize really strongly in our testimony and I hope the committee moves on this, is the notion of having a very stakeholder-based definition of the STEM subjects. And I would certainly think that the arts community would be a stakeholder in that conversation, because when we talk to employers, they talk about creativity, design skills, things that, that fall within the arts community. We certainly want to want to make sure they're, they have a seat at the table when we talk about what you know, the skills of the future really are. Terrific. My time has expired. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman.